Revolution Radio proudly presents, live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia, it's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. Uh, today, we are going to be joined by Belinda Wellmack. She is a spiritual counselor teacher and author of Lessons from the Twelve Archangels, Divine Intervention in Daily Life. Uh, she is a scientist by training with a dual master's degree in microbiology and environmental science. Belinda was called into service by the Twelve Archangels while working in a medical university lab as she was doing a stem cell experiment. For nearly 25 years since that meeting, Belinda has had an active spiritual counseling practice working with the 12 archangels so without further ado welcome to the show today belinda how are you i'm great thanks for having me and we are thrilled to have you today um tell us let's start off by telling us a bit about your journey it's a very it's very interesting to come from a, a scientific background and it seems like many of us who do the spiritual work come from something to that effect and and move into something more of the metaphysical. How how did this all happen for you? Tell us what. Tell us the story. Well, I believe that um, you know, spirit sometimes needs us to have a well developed left or logical rational hemisphere before they burst open the creative spiritual hemisphere, and then you know, those of us who can figure it out how to balance the two, um, you know, that's how we. We carry on with our with our service of uh, helping others. So I was um, a biologist working in a lab, um, as as you know, and I was just doing my everyday routine. I was working on a bone marrow sample, and this this is quite a while ago. It feels like almost a, another life ago, Bernard and Treva. So, um, it, but I was taken out of the lab. So I really did have an out of lab experience. I was I found myself in a round stone room. It had a dirt floor. I remember thinking, wow, this doesn't work for sterile technique. Um, I, I need to be careful. And but I was just so where am I and how did I get here? Um, because it was it was. Um, it, in my experience, I was not imagining this. I really was feeling the air change. I could feel again that dirt on my on on my um, feet. So there was a golden ray of, of beautiful light that came in through the ceiling, and there appeared the Archangel Gabriel. And I knew it was Gabriel because the angel had a trumpet and beautiful oh. colors, and you know. Uh, enormous wings you know make sure that I knew okay this this is an angel wow. and um, very very beautiful and so Gabriel just spoke to me um, right into my mind with, with directly into my thoughts and said Belinda we're calling you you have new work to do we need you to help um, humanity to remember that they are God's divine children and I remember saying, um, Gabriel, I think you've called the wrong person. I don't have the, <laughs> I don't have the qualifications for this. This sounds like, you know, I need to have experience in psychology and I don't, I'm a biologist. And, um, Gabriel said, well, all we need for you to learn and to understand is in the book that is directly to your left. And so I turned to my left, and there was a book that I kid you not, it was at least three feet wide and a 
one foot or greater high. Wow. And that was a bit intimidating. <laughs> I was like, that is a lot of information. And then the book opened up and out of the middle in beautiful scarlet red fire letters was the word love. And I said, okay, I think I can learn how to love. If this is what you're asking me to do. And I don't remember the rest of the conversation. It seemed like I was there for quite a long time. And I remember at the end, Gabriel said, we will be back. And I said, you know, okay. And then I was, I was um, once again back in the lab holding my sample um, and the syringe that I was using to, to work with my sample, my bone, the bone marrow sample I was working with. But my whole body was vibrating. I checked my watch because I thought, surely I've been gone for hours and not one minute had, had gone by. And um, so that was my first meeting with the Archangel Gabriel. And sure enough, the, then about a month later, I met the Archangel Michael. And then a few months after that, I met the, the entire circle of these beautiful rays of energy, loving forces that guide and help every single human being here at the great school. Schoolroom Earth is what they call it. Mm, I love it. What a fantastic story, and, and thank you for sharing that. I, I feel so many parallels to, to your story with my own personal story that I went through uh, with the, the light beings that, that appeared to me as well. Um, so, Belinda, what, who are the 12 archangels? We hear so much um, about the archangels. Of course, we have the, the Western religious um, concepts that are taught to us in school and catechism, et cetera, et cetera. But I, 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 for me, I'm, I, I feel there's so much more than what is, you know, in the Bible or what is uh, depicted and taught by, you know, by the nuns <laughs> in Catholic school. <laughs> uh, so can you, can you share with us, what is your, your concept of the, of the 12 archangels? Well, Bernard and Treva, again, they, they say that they come from the central sun or the central soul of our creator or of the heart of the universe. And they say that there are many names and words for, for God, for our creator, divine source, divine oneness. And this is also true for the 12 archangels. They have many different names depending on the whether it's the earthly religion or um, just the introduction that we may or may not have had to the archangels. So they say that their number is symbolic. It represents a cycle. So we have 12 signs of the zodiac. We have 12 months of the year. We have 12 hours on a clock face. And they gather together. They hold us within this amazing school, and they help us to learn all there is is love. And so here on Schoolroom Earth, we get to experience the amazing illusion of fear. And so they help us to recognize that it is illusion to make a different choice, to keep our vibrations full of divine love so that we actually, we bring heaven, which is a vibration of pure love, to here, to earth, so that it can be one, part of oneness, so that we don't have to get lost so much in all of this separation that we human beings, you know, we get lost in. Yeah. So they they don't really talk about their names. They say, you know, um, they give me permission to talk about what they call the celebrity um archangels which are gabriel and michael and raphael but they right. have again they have they have many names so you know so for example we also know the archangel michael as saturn um, mm -hmm. uh, that that is guiding us and that's the main thing again is that they are our teachers they are our mentors connecting us with the teacher that always lives within us which is our own heart and soul and and they um, they want to help us to evolve to move through our cycles, so that every turn of the wheel, 
you know, they love to describe themselves as a big wheel and humanity is on this wheel of, of evolution with them, that um, we are awakening to the greatest power that there is, which is the power of love. Yes, yes, I couldn't agree more. Thank you. And going back a little bit to the, you know, the earthly teachings that we've been taught about the archangels, I, I remember vaguely the idea of that, uh, you know, there were the lower angels, there were the archangels, and that they were uh, the ones seated next to God, you know, again, perpetuating what I would consider that, uh, that illusion of separation from the divine. And, and what, did, what did they say about all that? So, Bernard, I could just give you a hug because this is one of their <laughs> favorite topics to talk about. They, um, the 12 archangels, do not believe in hierarchy. They say we all come from oneness and that the human, the human soul, the human being is equal in power and potential to that of an archangel. So the arc in archangel just means they make bridges. So just like an archway or a, 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 again, an arch that would connect two separate things and, and make it together as one. And so they say, you know, forget all of the archangels are here and humans are way down here, far below on a, on a vibrational ladder love is what brings that vibration up that love is what connects us to that pure consciousness that we can we can create whatever it is that we need and desire to create now the pure that vibration is meaning the closer that it resonates with pure love the 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 better it's going to be right because love creates the most mm -hmm. glorious reality. So again, they want to thank you. They're very grateful that you brought up that question mm -hmm. because the, their, their teaching is so much, you know, it's oneness. We are all one. The human family is one with the, with the angels. And let's work together. Let's work together to bring love where love is missing so mm -hmm. that we can all experience a different reality. Here, here, yes, I couldn't agree more. Wonderful, and I, uh, I, my curiosity is piqued at the uh, of their concept of we are all connected and we are all one, and and the words that came came to mind during that is is life, life force that that the life force that moves through us connects us with everyone and everything around us. And I can't help, and, and forgive me if, if, uh, if I'm being a little cheeky in asking this, but I can't help but think of life in other galaxies and other universes, and, and are, are they a part of that? Is, that? is that connected to the soul of the central sun? Yes, of course. Um, the universe encompasses all of God's great cosmos, all of God's galaxies, or the creator, again, whatever, you know, um, right. word we want to use for the creator. But the, the, the 12 archangels, um, they may, and it, the, again, they may have different names in, in different galaxies. But here on Schoolroom Earth, we have very specific homework assignments. And we come here to learn the value of love. And as we do that, by recognizing when our vibration has dropped, when we're in a place of fear, anxiety, despondency, and we shift that within our own being and we, uh, we allow the angels to help us, every particle of God's energy is felt that shift, feels that love and that transformation everywhere within the great universe. So we human beings, we may be just a teeny, teeny dust speck in, in the great cosmos, but we're doing important work here that has a positive effect on all of the universe. And it's important to understand, according to the angels, we haven't been abandoned. You know, we're not the misfit tribe that's, you know, just um, failing miserably that, you know, all of these other worlds and, and um, 
again, galaxies and star systems that they are, they are achieving far greater than what we are doing. We are here on a specific um, task and we're, and they say we're actually, we, we may not realize it, um, but we're getting the job done and we're not doing it alone. We have all kinds of help as I'm sure that, that you are well aware of. Yes, yes, and 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 I thank you for sharing that because so so many within the the scope of this type of work and and especially when we're incorporating um, any types of communication from other worldly or other cosmic citizens of our universe, we hear so much about oh the uh, the the Earth is um, uh, what's the word we've been like I'm trying to think of the word that they're saying um. Uh, when you know when when there's a like a disease we've been uh, blocked off from the rest of it, of the of the galaxy because we are these fighting little children you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh but don't worry you know everyone's always like don't worry though if, if anything ever happens we'll we'll have the help we need but it's i'm glad that you said that that we're not the the outcast we're not the uh, you know the fallen ones, and we hear so much about that as well. But that's been indoctrinated into us through religious concepts that we are the sinners, we are the ones who have fallen from grace, and and whatnot. Do they do they speak about that as well? Well, the twelve archangels say that the fall from grace is that we come here to experience the illusion of fear, and and we all know that are sharing this conversation today that fear is not an easy illusion to walk through and to champion to remember that love is the greatest power that there is you know it's very convincing and um so the 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 fall from grace is that we can believe we are separate from our creator we have that ability in our human brains to believe that we're all alone and that we have been abandoned by god so that is the actual fall it's within the human being it's between the ego and the heart or the ego and the higher mind which however you again whatever language you want to use and another thing that the angels really um, want to you know share is that not only are we not failing and not only are we not that we have not been abandoned and and they want our egos to hear this because that helps the ego to come back home to God. But they also want to say this is not a school where where we want to be rescued off of it by other some kind of wonderful galactic citizens. We need to be here. We are learning important lessons. We signed up to come. We're very, very courageous. We're all in this together and we are God's divine children. So we have a lot of help and that is the main thing that they want us to hear so do we experience a temporary separation or fall yes we do Mm -hmm. but again we totally have not been abandoned and we are very loved and supported yes yes we are and in as far as i i can't help but wanting to play the devil's advocate here with uh i can hear the questions now in the emails uh what would they say about um, people that are born in, let's say, the Gaza Strip or in a war-torn country or, or that are born in extreme poverty? Uh, what, what is the message to those that are in a very hostile, uh, barely surviving type of environment? So we, um, we agree before we incarnate into schoolroom earth, what we are going to experience. But it's important to understand that within each one of us, we are connected to every other human being that lives or has lived. So even though, you know, you are where you are and Treva is where she is and I'm safe here in Maine, we still feel what is happening in Gaza. So what we can do in order to help other human beings who are experiencing great poverty and war and violence is we can look for those emotions and fears within our own vessels 
and we can hand those back to our creator or as i as we talk about in lessons from the 12 archangels we can work with the energies of our chakras those amazing colors are alive and they are the vibration of love so we can find that violence within us we can find that lack within us and we can put it in the color purple and we can transform it back to love and that helps everyone on this planet and that's where the angels you know they say to us you know don't don't forget about your neighbors that are you know 15,000 miles on the other face of the of the earth understand that what they are experiencing it lives within you so find it do something about it bring love where love is missing and help raise the vibration of schoolroom earth for the greatest good for all concerned here does here that, does that make sense oh yes absolutely absolutely and i agree i agree with that teaching wholeheartedly i feel it's very important to transmute that energy and it does reverberate across the planet and and for some reason, and maybe it's about the whole illusion of separation where many people feel that 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 type of work doesn't do anything, that the internal work doesn't affect the outside. And, and I couldn't disagree with that more. I feel that it's the internal work that reverberates, like you said, across the planet. People seem to forget, and maybe this is something that, that you would like to touch on, uh, the the idea of that we are energetic, that we are vibrational, that we are we are not solid carbon, you know, uh, solid beings. We are energetic beings, and and that energy that we emit and reverberate throughout our lives is what changes our life and ripples outward. Well, sure, of course, everything that exists is made of energy. Energy is all there is. And that's what God is made of. God is energy. So we can have a great effect on what other people are experiencing by, again, taking responsibility for what we are experiencing and changing that from within us. But just like, just like if we have a warm spot in a room and a cold spot in a room, we know with regular physics, right? Not even talking metaphysics, the, the two temperatures are going to find each other. The warmth is going to move to the cold and it's going to neutralize. And so that's what energy does. And so when we focus on love, and I mean really bringing love where love is missing within within our own being and understanding we are all one, then that love is going to go out and it's going to neutralize with the fear that is in other places within our own psyche, but also within our own human race. And that's how it works. And the angels say, it's okay. It's okay if you if you don't believe. It's all working anyway. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, we're coming up on a commercial break, so I just want to take this moment to share with everybody, uh, if you would like to get more information about Belinda's book, The Twelve Arch uh, Lessons from the Twelve Archangels, uh, you can go to BelindaWomack.com. That's B-E-L-I-N-D-A-W-O-M-A-C-K.com. Uh, there's uh, what, there's a lot more information than just the book there as well. You, know, you have online classes, I see, audio classes, a blog, and, uh, of course, the information on the book. Um, when we return, we're going to continue our discussion on the... And now, back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. And welcome back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Uh, we're speaking with Belinda Womack today on her new book, Lessons from the Twelve Archangels, Divine Intervention in Daily Life. Um, Belinda, the book was just recently released? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Just came out. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. When, uh, where is the book available? 
So the book is available on Amazon or through the publisher, which is Inner Traditions, or you can get a signed copy with a personalized message from the 12 Archangels um, on my website. Oh, wow. That's nice. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. And of course, that's at BelindaWomack.com. Um, let's go back to talking a little bit about um, the the suffering on the world. And, and, and I, I actually wanted to talk about illness and healing. Uh, for me, uh, I find that most illnesses are an energetic imbalance. There's something that uh, is, is, is not being looked at. There's some kind of blockage that's going on in our body. Uh, I, I, I kind of lean toward, you know, the Eastern philosophy of chi and, 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 the, um, and the channels that move through our body and the energetic channels that move through our body. What do the uh, archangels uh, speak about healing and what's their method of healing? So, and they talk quite a bit about this in um, in the book, Lessons from the Twelve Archangels. But the the angels say that illness begins in the emotional body. That it's what happens is is that we human beings we don't understand sometimes the importance of feeling our feelings, letting those emotions. Um, you know, do what they need to do. And they, they describe it that the emotional energy is actually the divine mother's energy that, that flows within us. Our mm-hmm. mental energy is the divine masculine's energy right. or the divine father's energy. So if we get, you know, kind of bound up in fear in our, in our mental body, then that can create congestion in our emotional body. And then that's going to show up in our physical body. So they say, of course, we want to always take responsibility for what we're thinking and to remember that if we're thinking negatively or pessimistically, that's going to show up, you know, that's going to lower our vibration. But also, you know, they, they say you, you really want to be real with yourself. You want to be true to those feelings. And if you're unhappy or you're angry or you're miserable, you want to listen because listening is what's going to allow you to make a change. Um, and, that, and that change could be to even to surrender, to let your own higher self and, and your angels and guides in to help you. So it's that allowing that emotional energy to move um, which also helps the root chakra energy which is in ruby red is the healing quality of the root chakra energy as they talk about in the book and that's what really helps um, of course you know move the chi move all of the energy but they say to feel is to heal. That's the bottom line. Mm, I, I couldn't agree more. I love it. I love it. My, um, my, of course, my immediate reaction is that our society today has perpetuated this idea that feeling is bad or uh, being sad. A great example is uh, the how many millions and millions of people are taking pharmaceutical antidepressants or anti-anxiety or, or, or how, you know, you're told that you're acting out if you're angry or you're told that you're acting out if you're crying and you're sad. And the, con- the social conditioning that doesn't allow us to feel, um, uh, is there any mention of how we can fix that? <laughs> or, I, mean, I know it's going to take a few years to get past this social conditioning, but uh, it, I definitely feel it, it's working against us. Well, Bernard, the the um, the message here is that we need to balance our masculine and our feminine. You know, we have become a very masculine or left rational hemisphere, logical, you, you know, logical right. rational hemisphere or aspects of the brain. We don't actually just have, you know, two hemispheres. We've got all these other amazing parts to our brain, but just to make it simple, you can think of that left hemisphere that's logical, rational as masculine. And so in our society, that masculine is what's encouraged um, to be in control, 
right? To, to be able to, if we can touch it and feel it, then that means it's real. And if we can't, then that means it's not real. And emotions, whether they are of a lower vibration, such as rage or that higher vibration of happiness, it's, it flows in that feminine part of the brain, which is emotional and spiritual and creative so what we can do to help society is for those of us who are open-minded which really means we use all parts of our brain um, more than what you know um, Einstein said that we use he said humans like to use 10 percent of their of their brains we can use a bit more than that and we can um, we can welcome the feeling of our feelings and understand that they are sacred and that's what we as individuals can do to help bring about um, a a healthier balance within all of society it's exactly where we began our conversation Mm -hmm. you know we we are all one so what you know what the three of us do on this conversation together with your audience we make a big difference for the rest of our society here um in north america as well as for the world yes here here absolutely and um with that being said i i just i had to i want to jump in and just say i really feel that um going through uh anxiety or going through depression or going through anger or whatnot is very very healthy uh, I, I don't understand why we feel that, uh, you know, being upset is something we need to run away from. Uh, I find that uh, many people uh, with many mental, spiritual, and emotional issues, as well as physical, come from stuffing those uh, feelings and, and really uh, making believe they're not there, you know. And I talk about it quite a bit, the idea of embracing our shadow self, embracing the aspects of ourselves that are not, I don't want to say that are negative, but the the, the part that we we try to ignore, we are one whole being, like you said, we are masculine, we are feminine, we are, and we are all connected. And I do feel that ignoring the, the, the shadow, and this goes even with society in general, you know, ignoring the lower aspects of society does not do anything to help uh, heal society. Well, that's true, but we human beings, you know, we can find it challenging to be vulnerable. And so to do the inner work that you are talking about and also the outer acceptance work um, to accept people who may be really struggling or who, you know, the old saying is maybe they're on the wrong side of the tracks from our right. perspective, right. you know, it takes a lot of courage to be different. You know that, you know that from your own life story oh, yeah. and um, to find that, to find that voice, to be a voice of change, it takes courage. And that's where, again, those 12 archangels can really help us. They love to just step in and say, okay, well, you have a will chakra, that sapphire blue energy that's right in your, in your throat in your neck that holds up your self-esteem well let's add our energy to your throat chakra let's make let's be in a sapphire blue universe for a moment and fill up that courage you know if you can think of it as a courage fuel tank Mm -hmm. so when i tune into um bernard right your your courage fuel tank is it's really it's up there at maximum and that's great but we need to understand and have compassion that a lot of human beings they just don't have that strength and that that's okay yeah it's okay what we want to do right is that's why you have your show is to empower them to move one inch, to budge one inch from where they are right now, to let a little more courage in, a little more strength, speak up a little bit more, be be willing. You know, it's all about willingness to feel those feelings, to understand they're sacred. And not only that, you know, since we, we are in such a money-based society, but feeling our feelings helps us with our prosperity because – as as you've talked about, you know, it's about energy and it's about flow. So 
you know, if we want to help with that distribution of resources, we want to feel our feelings. And again, remember that they are sacred and ask for our creator, whether we do it through the 12 archangels, we do it through our higher self. They all work together. Mm -hmm. All of our guides work together to fill us with courage and willingness, willingness to transform and willingness to open up so that we can receive even more. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, in the in the book, um, I I understand that the archangels talk a bit about, and, and I feel this kind of goes with what we're talking about, uh, learning to communicate with the inner child, and uh, to create a, a certain feeling of, of a trustworthy, pure connection with your higher self, your angels, your guides. Uh, what do they say are the the benefits of this and and well, how can we go about it, actually? So the, the inner child is a part, actually, of the human mind. So it is, um, it is very real within us. And so it, it helps to connect with that inner child through, even if we have a photo of ourselves as a, as a child, or we can, for some of us that, um, you know, using imagery is easier, we can just close our eyes and ask to see that little child. If we can't see that child, we can feel that child through, through again, through our feelings and, and our breathing. And the, the inner child is a, a way, it, again, it is a vibration that gives us access to our superconscious, which is our guides and angels, our intuition, all of heaven, and and really creative genius. But it's also a doorway into our subconscious, which has all of those patterns of limiting beliefs that are locked within our cells and that maybe we even inherited from our ancestry. It's the, the, the inner child has access to the wounded child who can reveal those wounds so that we can offer them up and transform them as well as the God child or the divine child that again connects us with our intuition in a pure, clear way. You know, the, the, the 12 archangels want us to have access to the pure and clear truth that is founded in love and focused on love and on oneness and equality and unity. And so they say that you know, it is like being a pure and innocent child that we we can reconnect with that innocent truth. And and those of us who are blessed to work with children occasionally, we you know, we understand how they love the truth and how outspoken they can be. And you know, they just, you know, they're they're not often bothered so much with needing to tell lies and, and get caught up with deception they tell it like it is and that's the 12 archangels message here is that by connecting with the inner child we have access to the truth the real truth the real truth about ourselves as well as the real truth about god and that would be a good thing to connect with on both sides here here yes absolutely I, I can't help but think it, it brings me back to uh, the days when I was going through my my tra my spiritual transformation and one of the aha moments and it, it goes with what we just spoke of here was the realization that uh, you know I I grew up in South Florida everything was very trendy and everything had to be cool and flashy and 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 whatnot and you know I remember having this moment of saying you know what. The cheesy stuff, you know, the things I used to make fun of are the truth, the the, the innocent, the pure, the, the what I would call cheesy is actually the right path, <laughs> the correct <laughs> path to go on, not this ego-based, constructed, trying to always look perfect, trying to always sound perfect, trying to always live perfectly. That truly is uh, is the, the big lie here. And uh, it, it, the idea of the inner child uh, spoke to me with that, actually. So thank you. Well, sure. And it's important to to remember that we're just not asked to compromise ourselves, but it can take it can take a certain amount of life experience to come to that point to realize, 
hey, you know, I get to be my true authentic self. I'm allowed. I have permission. I have permission to be my true authentic self. And that seems to be one of the greatest from what from my interaction with the uh, with the public uh, that seems to be one of the greatest obstacles that people feel that they they're worried about what their parents are going to think or what their family thinks or what their peers are going to think and and their their fear of connecting with their spiritual self seems to be um held up because of that well sure because human beings do not like to be rejected <laughs> you know, we we feel here coming to Schoolroom Earth that we've been abandoned by our creator because we get to experience fear, which is separation. So we've got this ego that already is feeling abandoned and separated from our soul. So we become very we're very tribal. And and so we we really it's so, so painful us for us to feel that rejection and to go through, oh my goodness, is my tribe or my people or my, you know, my society, are they going to reject me? So what the angels say about that is they say, you know what, ask for divine source to fill every cell of you with unconditional love and acceptance of yourself. Ask for yourself to be completely saturated with the knowing and the faith and the trust that you are accepted by you and by all other particles of the great cosmos. And then it is impossible to be rejected. And that's what gives those of us who have to share maybe a you know, a story that's not in the box, it's out of the box, as the saying goes. That's what can give us that that power and that confidence to say, okay, let's do it. I'm not going to be rejected. I'm going to be welcomed. And that's, again, that intention that we yeah. can hold, Bernard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're running out of time, and I really wanted to touch on this particular topic. Um, there is a, a lot of talk within the... Uh, the I don't know if you want to call it the metaphysical community, the New Age, the conspiracy, the truth movement, all of these movements about uh, humanity coming into the golden age, humanity moving into 5D, humanity ascending, uh, heaven on earth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what do the archangels say about where humanity is headed? Are are we moving to a quote unquote golden age? Are are we ready to step into a, a, a five-dimensional reality. So they say we've always been ready. It's a little bit like the story of the Wizard of Oz, right? Mm. Um, they say we've always been ready. And again, it is about that community of, of heart that calls us to move forward and upward as as a people, as the human race, and that we we carry all of oneness with us as we do that. So, from the perspective of the of the twelve archangels, they say, "Yes, of course, you're 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 moving to heaven because you're learning how to bring heaven here to the earth." And even when we die and we leave our our bodies here and we we do move on to the vibration of heaven. We are still serving from the other side of the veil, and the veil, as we know, is is growing thinner. Mm-hmm. And then, for for you know, sometimes we we might feel that we're a little bit foolish, but many of us incarnate again and again and again to help facilitate the healing of schoolroom Earth, so that we can, you know, we get this lesson of of fear. We understand that love is really what we want to choose we make that choice for the greatest good of all of oneness and then you know the the big the big long range plan of schoolroom earth is that it becomes a playground for god's very happy children there's no timing on this this can happen right now Mm -hmm. this can happen within each one of us but you know we we don't want to run away we do want to stick here and do our homework Right. 
Absolutely. That's one of my um, theories is that the ascension of humanity is not to rise up. You know, we're not going to disappear. We're not, we're, it's not, uh, what's the, uh, the religious thing where the, uh, where people take off and float, float up to heaven. Uh, it's not, it's not leaving the earth. It's bringing that, that, that beauty, that life, that, that love society here on this planet now. Yes. 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 That's wonderful. Um, well, we have a couple more minutes, so let me ask you this. I like to ask many of my guests this. If you, ha if you knew that every single person on the planet were listening to the show right now, what would the one message be to tell all of humanity if they were listening right now? That you are God's beloved children and that you are worthy you are worthy of receiving what your heart desires. God uses what we desire as that golden carrot to get us to grow, to get us to evolve. And how do we want to do that? We want to choose love. We want to love ourselves unconditionally so that we can practice unconditional loving of others and of all of God's creation. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Um, Belinda, are, are you going to be appearing on any other shows or doing any workshops so people can, can come see you? Or, Well, right now um, I'm primarily focused on uh, radio interviews. I do have a live event that will be in Stonington, Connecticut on December oh. the 3rd. Yes. Um, Wonderful. I love Connecticut. <laughs> it's beautiful there. Um, and your book, of course, is available at BelindaWomack.com. Can people make an appointment to, to speak with you? Sure. I, um, you know, I've done private sessions for individuals and couples and families for over 25 years. And so I love to help people with their most impossible struggles, you know, things that they feel have been re recurring patterns in their lives that they feel, wow, they just can't seem to break through this. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Belinda, and thank you, everybody, for listening. We will see you next Tuesday for another wonderful show here on The Just Bernard Show. Thank you, everybody. We love you.